Shalom, family. Shalom. I'm coming to you guys with another video today, and it's so crazy. I'm starting this video at 1044-144. Must have been meant for me to do this video. I've been meaning to do this video for y'all for a while now. Y'all know I've been super busy. <clears throat> And I'm going to come talk to you guys again face to face about some of the things I've been doing. But I wanted to drop a video because I haven't been on here for a while. And today we're going to talk about um, what happened in the Garden of Eden. Did God really tell Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil? And what what was Eve thinking? Did she make a mistake? What was going on in her mind? Was she deceived by the serpent as so many of us have been led to believe where we're going to get into all of that today i made a facebook post a while ago and i just shared it so i can have it right up front and center for you guys and i'm going to read it to you <clears throat> and i'm going to post a video in this um I'm going to stop this and post a, a clip in this, okay? Because I was watching a video, and maybe I should do that first. I was watching um, a video that I've shared on here before. It's in my community tab. It's called The Guardian Angel. And it's about a guy talking about the role of the man and the woman. Now, in the beginning of the video, I was re-watching this video because I was sharing it with somebody. It was a guy. And I was re-watching this video just so I can converse with him on what the video was about after I shared it to him. And as soon as the video comes on, he starts breaking down the word um, eat. <clears throat> we all know the scripture. Let me get it. <clears throat> so, and the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now he breaks down this word eat and he says it means to uh, freely eat meaning to eat a double portion, right? And it, immediately I got a download. So I'm going to let y'all see that video and then I'll be back. Is that what he says? He him, what does he say? He gives him, he gives him one commandment, one. Mm -hmm. One and only one commandment to determine the purpose of the man, okay? What is the one commandment? Tell me exactly what it says because... The variation of it will be really important. Okay, what does it say exactly? Well, you're going to tell me in English. That's okay. It says, what does it say? What's the one commandment? You must not eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Okay, but that isn't the beginning of the commandment. The beginning of the commandment is, of all the trees of the garden, of eat, of, of the garden you may freely eat. Right? Yeah. Right? The first part of the commandment is the liberation of God. The liberty that he gives him. You can eat of anything in the garden. In fact, in Hebrew it says akatokel. It means you can feast. It literally means you can eat, eat. Okay? So when you thought you were full, have another meal. Right? It's double eating. So of all the trees in the garden, you can double eat. Except the one tree in the, in the garden. Of that tree, when you eat of it, you shall, it says mut mut, you shall surely die. Die, die. Okay? One commandment. Okay? The one commandment starts with eat, eat, and ends with die, die. I mean, that's, that's the way Hebrew does things, because it doesn't have exclamation points. If it had an exclamation point, it would just put it after eat and after die. Okay? So, the one commandment says you can eat of everything in the garden. Feast yourself. Delight. Be, you know, God doesn't say, and gluttony is a sin. He says, go eat. Except for this one tree. Okay, I'm back. So I watched, I was watching that and immediately I got a download on this word eat, eat and what, what this all means. I previously had read some scriptures in the third testament that I really, it didn't, I couldn't understand. And that's because I was missing a piece. 
And this was the piece that I was missing. So as you guys heard, he talks about it means to eat a double portion, to freely eat. So what was God saying here? God did not tell Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree at all. He said not to eat a double portion of the tree. And I know y'all sitting there and y'all looking like, what, what, what? No, no, that's not true. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down from many different books. So uh, using the third testament and then also the sealed portion. Um talks about this. And the reason what happens is the translations are so poor. This is why I always recommend to go back to the original language and try to pull as much of it as you can with the Holy Spirit leading you because the translation is poor. Okay. So they were not told that they could not eat of the tree of the garden of Eden. They were told not to eat a double portion. Now let's read from the third Testament. This is chapter 33, 10. I'm sorry, y'all. I'll be so passionate. I'll be losing. I'll be getting winded just talking so fast, saying so much, getting excited. <laughs> okay, let me catch my breath. <sighs> okay, the third testament, chapter 33, 33, verse 10. Humanity has traveled over a very long path and it still pref- prefers to eat the forbidden fruits which only accumulates sorrow and disappointment in its life. Remember that word sorrow. The forbidden fruits are those which, while being good, because they have been created by God, can become harmful to man if he has not properly prepared himself or if he consumes them excessively. Now, I had previously read this a very while, long while ago, And I understood it, but I didn't understand it like I did when I rewatched this video and had that download. If he eats them excessively, that's because everybody is always like, why wouldn't God want people to have knowledge? God never said we couldn't have knowledge. God never said not to eat from the tree. God said, don't eat excessively. Because too much knowledge can be bad for you. And I'm taking philosophy this semester. Our semester is almost over. This is the last um, the last week. Monday, we take our finals um, this quarter. And then I'm going for summer quarter. I, I'm so salty I can't stay out. But I'm trying to finish my degree fast because I feel like I'm behind. But that's another subject. So let's not get on there. But in our philosophy class... We have been talking about a lot of different philosophers, and one in particular, his name is Schopenhauer. And he is a very good example of what can happen to you if you get too much knowledge. And we'll we'll get into that a little bit more after I read all of this. Um, but I also have wrote some philosophy papers. I was going to come on here and read it for you guys. If you guys are interested in those papers and me just coming on here and reading them, leave a comment let me know if that's something that y'all want to hear i was going to do it but i was like maybe they they think that's boring but my papers i feel like my papers was so interesting y'all let me know though okay so he if he can become harmful to men if he has not properly prepared himself or if he consumes them excessively now i want to read to y'all the third Third Testament, chapter nine and three. When you were told of the tree of life, of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of which man ate, I only wish to make you understand that when man comes to have sufficient knowledge to distinguish between the just and unjust and begin to be responsible for his acts, from that time he began to gather the fruits of his work. So this is saying God wished for us to have enough enough knowledge to distinguish between good and evil. But again, when you get too much knowledge, it can become bad. And we're going to talk about why. From that time, he began to gather the fruits of his works. You know that God said to man, grow, multiply and replenish the earth. That was the initial law that you were given. Oh, people, later, the father would not ask man, and we're just going to say father for the sake of this video, but y'all know we always interchange it with mother because we 
just talked about those translation issues. One second, family. Okay. I'm back, family, but we talked about those translation issues. So, would not ask man only to multiply and that the species continue to grow, but rather that their sentiments are ever more elevated and that their spirits began a broad development and unfolding. Moreover, if the first law were that of the propagation of the human race, how can you conceive of the mother applying sanctions for obeying and fulfilling her mandate? People, it is possible, is it possible that such a contradiction could exist in your God? Look at what material interpretation man gave to a parable that spoke only of the awakening of this spirit in man. Therefore, analyze my teaching and do not say anymore that you are paying for the debt the first inhabitants acquire for disobedience to your mother. Have a more elevated idea of divine justice. Now, okay, I'm going to stop there because it's a lot that I got to say right here. What is going on? The first law was to be fruitful and multiply. Why is it talking about that in regards to the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Because the tree of knowledge of good and evil held knowledge that we believe to be taboo, but it's necessary for us to have this knowledge. Uh, but again, not too much. And we, I'm, again, we're going to talk about that. Let's just stay on task. We're going to talk about knowledge that's too taboo. But sex is one of these knowledges. So the scripture knowledge is tied to sex, knowing, to know somebody on a very deep, intimate level. So when we talk about knowledge, we're also talking about sex. So when Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they learned about sex, obviously. Or they may have learned, I don't want to say they learned about sex necessarily because the previous chapter um, before they ate from the tree, it said that they knew each other and they were not ashamed. After they ate from the tree, it said that they knew each other and they were ashamed. So something happened. Anyway, it was a taboo kind of knowledge or sex or whatever, what would ever have you that took place, right? And, you know, it says, see, the translation be so messed up because it say that they knew each other, but maybe, maybe they knew about sex, but they, for some reason, they couldn't have kids. And we're going to read that in Nephi because in the, in the previous verse, it said that they knew each other and they were not ashamed. So they obviously knew about sex. I don't know what transpired. It was something about having kids though. For some reason, they couldn't have children. I don't know. I'm, I'm Hey, don't shoot the messenger. But let's just read Nephi. And it's saying, Now behold, if Adam had not transgressed, he would not have fallen. But he would have remained in the Garden of Eden. And all things which were created must have remained in the same state in which they were after they were created. And they must have remained forever and had no end. They would have had no children. Wherefore, they would have remained in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew no misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. Right? So they, they wouldn't have had children. They would have stayed in this state of innocence, like a childlike state forever. So maybe it was like a puberty that they went to through. I don't know. Maybe like they had sex, but they, it, they didn't have like the tools to be able to recreate. Like somehow the tree gave them the knowledge to be able to recreate fruit represents children okay so now they're ever to have children let's talk about that we talked about why this knowledge could be bad and good okay and a lot of people don't shoot the messenger we always say you know children are a blessing children are a blessing i got four kids okay and children are a blessing but everything that is good can also be bad. Okay. Everything that is good can also. It's a blessing to have kids. But too many kids 
can be bad. Let's keep it real. You can't afford all them kids. Bills high. Too many kids need shoes, clothes, school, lunch, uh, supplies, just stuff. Too many kids can be bad, especially in this economy that we're living in today. So this is what we're talking about when we're saying knowledge is good, but too much of it can be bad. And that's just one example, just because we're talking about children here. So this is what it's talking about when it say to grow and multiply. Now, I want to read you another scripture. Why is this important? Because God told them to be fruitful and multiply. And they could not be fruitful and multiply unless they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They couldn't have kids unless they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So how would they be able to keep the commandment that God gave to them unless they ate from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, which we have been led to believe that God told them not to eat? So this is what God is talking about down here when they say, how could it be such a contradiction in me? You know that God said to man, grow, multiply, and replenish the earth. That was the initial law that you were given. Oh, people, later the mother would not ask man only to multiply and that the species continue to grow, but rather their sentiments are ever more elevated and their spirits begin to broaden, development, and unfolding. Moreover, if the first law were that of the propagation of the human race, how can you conceive of the mother applying sanctions for obeying and fulfilling her mandate? Applying sanctions on who? We was told Adam and Eve was cursed. Eve was cursed to let the man rule over her. Okay? We're getting deep into this. Let's see what uh, the seal portion says about Eve and about Eve from the tree. So I say now. So I say, but then God commanded them to multiply and replenish the earth which would have required them to partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Y'all see that? Now, this is multiple books saying the same thing. Now, what's wrong with the Bible? Is it a translation issue? Or is the Bible right and all the other books wrong? I think all the other books is right and the Bible was translated poorly. Just like the Third Testament say. But it say... Which would have required them to partake of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, they could not obey both of the commandments of the mother. But Eve chose the more righteous commandment for herself and the joy that she wanted to experience. For she wanted to be a mother and learn by experience that which she would know and understand in order to become an eternal mother in the celestial kingdom where she will rejoice in her children forever. Therefore, she chose to disobey the father, mother, and partake of that which was not commanded by the mother, thus enabling her to become a mother. And in this choice, she was blessed above Adam. Why? Because Adam misunderstood. Okay, women pay closer detail attention to detail we know how to read between the lines and men just they don't have uh, good comprehension skills like women do and it's things that men excel in that women don't excel in but specifically speaking when we're talking about comprehension women excel in comprehension and men don't so when god was telling adam not to eat and then he went and told eve maybe he miscomprehended now we just read that God told them not to, not that they could not eat of it, but that they shouldn't eat of it excessively. Now, who do y'all think broke that commandment? Y'all think it was Eve because she gave Adam of the tree? Or do y'all think Adam ate excessively? We know that men have a larger appetite than women. And it's more than likely that Adam ate excessively from the tree. Why? Because Adam gained so much knowledge that it had become bad. It had become evil. Why? He wanted to subjugate Eve under him. And, you know, they want to write in there and tell you that it was God who said. No, I did a whole video on this before. God didn't say nothing. 
It was just like God just telling you the consequences of what's going to happen. So, and I explained this in the previous video. If I say, son, don't go out in the street because if a car come flying down the street and it hits you, is that me saying that I'm ordaining that to happen to you? No, I'm not ordaining that to happen to you. I'm just telling you the consequences of your actions. If you go out in the street and you get hit by the car, do that mean I'm the one behind the car driving it to run you over? No, that's not what it means. God did not ordain man to rule over the woman. God was just simply explaining the consequences of them eating excessively from the tree. Adam had gained too much knowledge. And he felt like, you know, knowledge made him greater, okay? Made him like God. Anyway, let's continue the video. Why did the serpent come to Eve? And not Adam. See, this is another root because we just explained comprehension. We just read in the third testament that this is a parable about the awakening of the spirit in man. I've told you guys in many videos that the wife is referred to as the spirit in scripture. So if we're talking about something dealing with the spirit, of course, it's when we're going to be dealing with the feminine. And that's why the spirit came to Eve and not Adam. Eve was basically talking to herself, okay, when she was talking to the serpent. We know this because we know that the name Eve means what? Snake. I talked about this in my last video and that Eve, the snake going up the chakras, the kundalini, that is the snake, the serpent, that is Eve, the divine feminine. Okay, I just read to you, Eve became the celestial mother. When you read in your scriptures, our mother above is free, and that's the mother of us all. It's referencing Eve, Mary. Mary is one of her titles is the second Eve. Okay, so this is why the spirit came to talk to Eve, because Eve was basically just talking to her higher self, her spirit that told her to eat from the tree. OK, which she was right, because I say she chose the more righteous commandment. I was watching the 100, the, the last season that just came out. And one of the characters, she said on there, sometimes we have to disobey in order to transcend. This is the 100 episode 11, season six. Eve understood this. That's why she took the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Sometimes we have to disobey in order to ascend. Let's let's get back down to this free will and original sin. You say to me that because of the freedom of will, you have fallen into faults and errors. I also say that through that gift, you can infinitely elevate yourself beyond the point from which you departed in the beginning of your elevation. The commandment wasn't that they shouldn't eat from the tree, but that they shouldn't eat too much. Right. So, but what does it say? Verse seven. Through that gift, you can infinitely elevate yourself beyond the point from which you departed in the beginning of your elevation. That's what she was talking about. And the 100, when she says, sometimes they asked her, why didn't you leave when you was commanded to leave? And she said, sometimes we have to disobey in order to transcend. That is what Eve did. Y'all need to quit. Oh, woman destroyed the world. The scripture actually say that it is wisdom, woman who will save the world. Because what? Through her actions, we now have the ability to elevate, to become spiritually awakened beings. And this is why I always say you cannot awaken without the divine feminine. She is the definition of wokeness. OK, if you ain't talking about the divine feminine and you saying you woke, I understand you to be asleep. Okay, I'm just keeping it 100. Because it takes the divine feminine, like I just told y'all, 
the Shakti, Kali. I did a video on even Kali being the same, the mother of all living. They're both called the mother of all living because they're literally the same character. Now, Shiva was known as the destroyer. Okay. We know that the Bible talks about the destroyer because the destroyer actually been, had been Adam. That's another video. We're going to talk about that. But the scripture says in Wisdom of Solomon that wisdom will reform the world. Woman will reform the world. The divine feminine will reform the world. And that's why y'all see all of the, the government, and every, the, you know, this world pushing women back to leadership positions, putting women in the driver's seat and all of these different type of slogans. You got Saks, Goldman Sachs. Now, yes, sweetheart, go sit down. Okay, you got people like Goldman Sachs who want to donate to black women for black owned female businesses. And all of these things like this going on. It's because we are going through a shift. The pendulum is swinging. And women are waking up, understanding who they are. They tired of y'all trying to tell them that, oh, the, the world is wicked because Eve ate a piece of darn fruit. <laughs> like, come on now. Y'all y'all doing too much. So through Eve's actions, um, we are able to elevate. We are able to have the great awakening. 11, 11 on the clock. Now, Ecclesiastes verse 118 say for a much wisdom is much grief and he that increased of knowledge increased of sorrow. Now, this is why, again, the tree of knowledge can be bad. He that increases knowledge increases sorrow. What did I just tell y'all? Too many kids. You increase the knowledge. Too many kids can be bad. You don't have the finances, the income, the family help. Nobody to watch them while you go to work and you keep having them. Why? This is when it become bad. You know what the scriptures say about, what did it say? It's a scripture about reading too many books. It's okay to read all those books, but baby, you better know that they all better be saying the same thing. If they, if you feel you getting all these different interpretations, you know, that's why I don't really, let me tell y'all, people be posting a lot of books and this is not directed towards anybody specifically. I love when people post books and scriptures and stuff. Because I read them and I instantly am able to put it together with what I already know. But the reason why I don't go searching out books and being like, I got 20, 30, 200 books and <laughs> I can't even interpret them. I can't even put them the, the puzzle pieces together out of all of the books. They all going to say the same thing. This is why I don't. Because once you have the true understanding of something, it don't matter what book you read. You're going to see the, the same understanding. And this is why I'm telling you, this is coming from the Bible, the Third Testament, the uh, seal portion. And there's many more scriptures that corroborate this. I didn't did plenty of videos. Watch my previous videos but knowledge can become sorrowful even me having all this type of knowledge that I have I learned that it can become sorrowful I learned that for a while I had cut myself off from like the world because they weren't in my world I guess I want to say and this is a Schopenhauer type of mentality. I told you guys about Schopenhauer in the beginning of the video. I wrote an essay on him. If y'all want to hear my essays, again, leave a comment. Let me know. You go into this state, you know, it's the state, you know, I talked about in my essay. It's the state that you are in right after your awakening. Y'all know that depressed, uh, escape the matrix uh type of <laughs> mentality 
You got these type of people who want to escape the matrix. Everything is fake. It's nothing real. It's just the matrix. We got to get out of here. That's the Schopenhauer type of mentality. And we all have that after our awakening. You understand that you've been lied to. You can't believe it. But you you have to elevate from that step. And Schopenhauer kind of got caught in that escape the matrix phase. And a lot of people get caught in that escape the matrix phase. And it leads to things like suicide, etc. And we, we've been discussing this in my philosophy class. Um, but yeah, so you don't want to get caught in that phase. But, um, yeah, so we, we have, if you are consider yourself awakened, you've been through that stage. Um, yeah, I don't know how long I've been talking, how much, you know, this would be, but I'm probably about to end this video, but yeah, just a little bit more on increasing knowledge, increasing sorrow. You kind of isolate yourself. Like knowledge can make you isolated because you so smart that you create, and you know, Einstein said this, that smart people seem crazy to everybody else because they don't know what the heck you're talking about. They know we're near your level, okay? So you kind of feel isolated because it's not many people like you. You, you know, the ch you the chosen, the set apart, okay? Set apart from everybody else. And it's hard to find people who you connect with. It's hard to find... Um, you know, those people who just on your level. It's hard to find that. Imagine an adult living in a world full of children. <laughs> they wouldn't have nobody to connect. So this is kind of how it is for the chosen people. The chosen living in a world full of unchosen. You know, it creates that sorrow. You know, that... Uh, I, I got to escape this world. I'm never, I don't feel like I belong here, you know. So be careful because when you increase knowledge, you will increase um, sorrow. You know, it's just like the saying, what they say, more money, more problems. You know, people think they're going to get money and solve their little bit of problems and they never going to have no more problems. No, you start to have more problems when you get more money, then you need more money and then more problems come. It's the cycle. <laughs> Everything is a cycle. You can break the cycle by not wanting to have more money. Less problems, less money, less problems. <laughs> but anyway... I think y'all get to understanding what I'm saying, but I wanted to bring that to y'all. I'm going to summarize everything that I said. God did not tell Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, only not to excessively eat of it. Let's go back. The forbidden fruits are those which, while being good, they're good because they have been created by God can become harmful to man if he has not properly prepared himself or if he consumes them excessively. Now think about teenage parents. Children not ready for kids. Teen, and they having kids and it's hard. You got to be prepared, okay? You can't, you just jumping off the porch and you ain't ready. So they were not told not to eat of it. They were told not to eat excessively of it. So y'all can stop saying God is evil. God don't want you to have knowledge. That's a lie. Y'all can stop saying Eve ate from the tree and gave it to Adam and destroyed the world because that's a lie. At that moment, Eve gave you knowledge. Eve gave you the awakening. Eve made it possible for you to be this so-called woke person that you are. The chosen are the children of Eve. Understand this. The woman's seed shall bruise the serpent's head. Christ is many members, many people. There is no male or female in Christ. 
and that leads me to the, my next verse. My next video is probably going to be about Denai Kamadi, about how the Holy Spirit said that she pretty much wore Jesus like clothes. <laughs> and so when I keep telling y'all, I did a video titled Jesus is not going to save you. The Holy Spirit is going to save you. The spirit, which is the divine feminine. Amen. OK, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to keep going, but I'm thinking about doing a video on that. So I'm not going to keep rambling. Y'all know I will be rambling, saying the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I hope y'all learned something from this lesson today. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Share, share this video with other people so that we can spread the word. And I know you women, especially you women, ain't y'all tired of being called evil eves? Ain't your time. Share this video. Every time somebody call you an evil Eve. <laughs> All right, family. I love y'all. Shalom. Until we meet again.